I'm excited today. We're going to be taking a look at a 3D printer by Focus. It's the Odin 5 F3. Stay tuned. Will here for Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a 3D printer by Focus. This is the Odin 5 F3. Now, I just received it. Really, really excited. Asked a bunch of 3D companies to send me a 3D printer, and a lot of them told me I didn't have enough views. Well, lo and behold, a couple weeks later, Focus reached out to me and asked me if I would review their printer. This printer was on my radar. I really was interested in this printer in the past because of the features. Now, I know you guys are thinking, well, you have an Ender 3. What do you need another 3D printer for? First of all, you can never have too many 3D printers. Anybody that tells you that, stop being friends with them. Second of all, this has a lot of features packed into this out of the box. And speaking of which, look at this box. It looks like something that you'd buy at Staples or at Best Buy, like ready to go. And not only is it ready to go, they say it only takes three minutes to set up. We're gonna try that. Has a dual Z axis lift. That means it has two motors on each side to lift the gantry of your 3D printer. What does that mean? That means it's gonna be more stable prints because it's gonna be lifting evenly. It has a direct extruder. What does that mean? Instead of it going through a Bowden tube where it goes in from one motor all the way on the other side and crawls right down that pipe and goes to the extruder, it's right on the extruder. The motor's right there. It goes right in and shoots right out. No problems in that aspect. No extra steps. Nothing to worry about it getting gunked up in that tube. It has a full color touch screen built onto the printer. No more dial kind of thing. This also comes standard with a glass bed with that special adhesion for when it heats up, it ripples up, and then you print on it. And when it cools down, the ripples go flat and you can pull your print right off. So that's just some of the features. I'm gonna unbox this bad boy and put it together. So really pretty box, a lot of information. The other side looks the same. We got tabs here, we're gonna pull these down. And I'm really impressed with the box. I gotta say guys, Usually they come in a regular cardboard box. This one's fully printed, fully colored. All right, so this is what's slid out of the box. Right off the bat, I see the beautiful glass bed. It looks like this side wants to come off first. That's the back end of the printer. And this is the front of the printer. I'll take this off of this. Oh, we got some goodies underneath there. They give you some test filament and a nice accessory box, it looks like. Nice guide, whole bunch of goodies in there. We got a warranty card and we got some information on how to put it together. Got another Focus booklet, tells you how to install the software. Really nice, really dumb nice. Bag of tools, power cord, spool holder, USB to an actual printer USB connection. Spatula, almost looks like an art kind of spatula. Some ends, extra ribbon cable, clippers, which you can never get enough of those clippers. Some nuts and bolts, another bag of nuts and bolts, USB stick with a non-descriptive micro SD card and USB reader. Some needles for clog nozzles, and here we have the printer. All right, before we get started, this is 90% put together. It's not like your other 3D printers where you have to put everything together and figure out how things go. Basically, what we're gonna be doing is taking the saran wrap off, sitting it up, and putting in two screws. And they say it takes you about three minutes to set it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the setup. All right, so I'm gonna start a stopwatch, guys. There we go. So roughly 12 minutes and 28 seconds. But she's finished. Now all I have to do is take the plastic off and the clips off the side and plug her up. All right, so I've been playing with this for a couple hours now. And I got my first test print done, which came out really good. It was the cube. It was loaded on the SD card. And I just want to take a moment for you guys to realize, hear how quiet this thing is. The only thing you really hear is this fan up here. You don't hear anything else. 
I mean, that's pretty impressive. It's very quiet. I'm actually working with PLA Plus by Duramic. I just wanted to give them a shout out because they sent me some free filament that was awesome. If you didn't see that video, take a look at that right here. Right now, I'm doing a test print off the SD card. That's the Waving Cat. And I did one for every one of my printers. So I'm gonna compare it against my other printers because it's the absolutely best possible settings that you could actually get on a printer that they made. So I could see them side by side with my Ender 3, my Disway, and this one. This is actually my fourth 3D printer. Now leveling this, I will show you how to level it the way they said to do it. Basically what you do is you put it up to temperature and then you go into the leveling feature and it has points that you can level at and you put a piece of paper in between it. I use a little card. It's not bad. I have found that the middle was a little bit higher than I like it to be after I leveled all corners. Been having a little trouble with leveling, but it's been printing good with the leveling that I did on it. So even though it was a little off in some areas, it's still printing really well. So so we'll see how this print comes out. This one came out really good, and this one's printing right up against the bed, and it's printing really well. It just, it was a little odd that the nose was a little higher in the middle than it was everywhere else in the corners. The going rate for this printer is $359.99. Right now, there's a $70 coupon on Amazon, so that brings it down to $290. Bucks. So for under $300, you could have this machine with the dual access, direct drive, glass bed, full color touchscreen, and a Assemble it in 13 minutes. I think this is pretty good so far for a beginner. I'm gonna play with this for a week and I'm gonna get back to you guys. All right guys, so this is day three of me testing this unit and it's been doing really, really well. The first thing you wanna do when you get one of these 3D printers, I don't care which brand you buy, but you wanna look for the SD card that's in the machine with the USB stick. All your files, your print files, your software files, everything is on there. Unfortunately, with this one, this is not Mac compatible, but you could download a version version of Cura and put in the settings of the machine and be able to use it that way. Or you could use Prusa Slicer. The software that comes with your Focus Odin is only for Windows. And it's basically a version of Cura that Focus branded. So it's the same software. So if you want to know how to use the software, go to my video right here on how to use Cura. It's the same exact way to set up a print. So this has a lot of nice features. One of the features I really like is it has a run out sensor feature. And I want to show you this. Yes, it's censored, it ran out of filament. In the menu, you just click on option, and you click on filament. Then you grab the filament right here, push it in that little hole, and then just click on load, confirm. Once it's done, confirm. We'll move that smuts out of the way first. Click on confirm, click on the back door, back door, and then hit resume. And then your print will continue. Now it does start off really slow. It takes its sweet time getting there and getting back into position, but it does still keep on going. All right, so I did probably about around 11 prints with this 3D printer, and I just want to show you some of the prints that I did. The first thing I did was their test cube, and it came out pretty good, I think. The bottom didn't come out so hot. I couldn't get it off the raft very well, and I think that's just calibration. But when I did it in their filament, it came out just fine, and even the bottom came out just fine. It came off the raft a lot better. Then I did the test cat and I use again Duramic for the test cat. I had a little problem here and I don't think I had the bed level just perfect. This is the cat from the Ender 3. Give you guys an idea of the different print quality. And the only thing I see a problem with is the butt down here. That's the only problem that I see. But you could see that I had a little problem with the Ender 2. It's a tricky area. But they both came out really similar in quality, I think. So you can pause the video and see what you guys think. So then I wanted to see if it would work with just Cura and Prusa Slicer. So I did two test cubes. They both worked out really well. This is Cura, and that's the test cube for Cura. Give you guys an idea. And this is Prusa Slicer which I had to figure out how to put those settings in right, and I will be doing a video on that next week. Hopefully, if everything goes well, I'll have a video how to set up Cura and how to set up Prusa Slicer for you guys. Next, I used their slicer on a PC, and I did a little ghost, being that it's gonna be Halloween soon. He's hollow inside, and he came out, I think, really, really good. I like the way the detail came out. I like the way that it is, and that's only a 0.2 millimeter height. And then I decided to go bigger with the ghost, and I did an 11 hour our print guys almost 12 actually and I did bigger so that way you could put a tea light in there and I, I would probably do a battery tea light I wouldn't do a real tea light and I 
will leave in the link down below all the links to these models so you guys can print them out yourself. But yeah, I think that came out really good. 11 hours. You can see how big that is in my hands. Then I did a pirate, Captain Jack Sparrow. I'm doing that for somebody that I know that loves pirates. So I was like, you know what? Let's do Captain Jack Sparrow. Testing Focus's filament, and that's what the white is. This is a fidget cube, and it does work. It's a little tight. And I'm sure once I play with it, okay, I usually work these out pretty well before I show them. And I didn't really work this one out that well. You know, it just takes time for it to wear in. Definitely printed it. And then last but not least, I did a Deadpool. Now, this is the Deadpool if you will. Before I show you the comparison against the Ender, this Deadpool, I'm still learning how to get Prusa Slicer just right, and I did this in Prusa Slicer, and I'm trying to get the settings just right, and I was doing Z-Hop on this, so there is a little bit of stringing, and I gotta figure out with a direct drive, this is my first direct drive, I'm figuring out how to stop the stringing, and maybe it's temperature I gotta change, maybe something else with this printer, and you have to do this with every printer and figure out how to use it. Now, I've been using my Ender for almost two years now I have that zeroed in perfectly that way you guys could see the difference so this is the ender 3 right here and this is focus Odin 5 f3 so you guys could see the difference between the prints and there isn't much but I could see stringing on this one I did hit it with the heat gun to knock it down a little bit but I think I would just have to play with it and just get it just right it's the same filament it's the ceramic same red ceramic filament so out of these 11 prints I haven't had any misprints yet everything's been printing really well this is the first one where I've had stringing and I think it's because I haven't dialed it in just right yet all right guys it's been over a week now I rearranged my whole office so I could fit the new Focus Odin in with my regular 3D printers so, and I got this giant desk and I rearranged my whole office just so I could fit this printer in with my setup. That's how much I like it so far. So I've done about 14 prints with this bad boy and I've put it in its new home and I've actually hooked it up to Octoprint and it works great. It actually runs Octoprint really well. Got that all situated and my setup is actually one Raspberry Pi hooked with three different printers now. It runs really well. The only thing I gotta do is figure out how to hook a camera up to this printer now and figure out what I want to do that way. But now I want to talk about the pros and cons of this printer. Let's start with the pros. Super easy to set up. Took me 13 minutes, 12 minutes around that time. Really great for beginners, I feel. I think this would be a great intro to FDM 3D printing. I think this would be the way to go, in my opinion. Easy to level with a built-in leveling setup that it has in the software. It goes to five points in the bed so that way you could figure out how to level this out, which I think should be in every printer. It has all the features and upgrades that you'd possibly want for a 3D FDM printer, such as a direct drive, a glass bed, filament runout sensor, dual Z access motors, silent motors, and a full colored touch screen. And last but not least, everything you need is in the box, including filament. Cons. The file format has some limitations. You have to be careful of the characters you use. You can only use English, letters, and numbers. And they can only be 30 characters long. Now, why I bring this up is Prusa Slicer actually exports their file format pretty long and pretty in-depth of the information. It does exceed the file limitation. And I was having problems printing files because of the name. So keep that in mind. Small community. Unfortunately, this is a new printer. And I think it's going to do really well. I would put money on it, but the community is not big yet. So there's not a lot of information on how to set up things. But me personally, I'm going to try and change some of that starting with next week on how to set up your settings for Cura and Prusa Slicer. That is another con. Trying to get the right settings for Cura or Prusa Slicer. Fortunately, Cura is a lot easier than Prusa Slicer. I actually found several ways to get the settings in Cura just perfect, being that it does come with the software. My overall thoughts, guys, like I said in the beginning, I think this is a great printer for beginners, and I think it's also great for people that are a little bit more advanced. I think this will grow with you because it has all the features as an advanced user would want and use. So you got the beginner, and then you got the advanced, and the price point is actually really on par. So I give it a five out of five, guys. I absolutely love it. Obviously, I changed my whole office around to fit it in with my printers. Would not have done that if it wasn't a good printer. 
just wouldn't. And like I said, that's my honest opinion. I don't care if people give me stuff. I mean, I really appreciate that Focus reached out to me, especially when other companies told me no. I appreciate that, but I'm still going to be honest, and I'm going to still be honest to my fan base. I think that is truly how I'm going to grow. So if you own this printer, back me up down below and tell me whether it's good or bad, put it down below and tell me. Why do you love this printer? Why do you not like this printer if you own it? And if you do wind up getting it, please let me know what you think. That's it for me guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this video helped you in any way. And if you really enjoyed my content, ring that bell so you get notified when I make a video. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later guys. You're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just put, putting it out there.